Welcome to Egg Foo A What? The first and only podcast about people eating stuff. I'm Mike Liss. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of Egg Foo. What? Young Michael, I believe I speak for all our rabid fans out there who have spent the last two weeks wondering about the safari job. Give us an update, please. Here's my <laughs> well, job. Well, I'm still in first dance. I'm still in suspense. I mean, they they said it would be two weeks before I would hear anything. So now it is officially two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am getting a little antsy. Mm -hmm. I did send a little, uh, I know it's probably not cool anymore, you know, the thank you for your interview note. Uh, so I sent a little thank you That's nice. note. Yeah. Um, so uh, letting them know I'm still interested in the job. Uh, so that's where we're at. I, I did speak to the guy who set me on this journey. <laughs> he actually has worked a few shifts. Mm -hmm. He was giving me some pointers, you know, things okay. I didn't, I should know for if I start the training. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was very informative. He he did say he'll put in a word for me. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at. I wish I had more conclusive news, but uh we're still in suspense. Well, all this does is keep everybody on their toes for another week. <laughs> you, least, Mike List, at least are another a, week. Are a public or a PR genius. I mean, the the uh, attempt they they tried to stay open for two weeks, trying to get the spring break crowd, and unfortunately, those two weeks co coincided uh, with some of the worst weather <laughs> we've had in the last couple of weeks. Oh, really? So, yeah, he, he said it was a bit of a bust, that the, the park was closed on a couple of days. Uh, one day they, they did keep just the safari open, and it was like a madhouse. Uh, he said that they You're had keeping a... tabs on them. <laughs> well, I'm getting updates from uh, the guy who who, who uh, mentioned his job to me. Mm -hmm. he's, he's filling me in, and, you know, he's, he's, he's telling me about how he's supposed to drive. And, uh, you know, if there's uh, animals in front, uh, what you're supposed to do. That because you you know not hit them. Well, yeah, not hit them is the one thing. But the one thing that surprised me was that he said that I, I assume that like you would drive into a section where certain animals are. The uh, person behind you will give their spiel, you know, and you're you're kind of like just hanging out for a little bit with the animals. Mm -hmm. But he said no, that's not the way it works. You, you you're sort of going at a slow roll. You you don't stop. You know, so, oh. <laughs> so, because you got hey, you, hey, because yeah, that's life, isn't it? A slow <laughs> roll, and you don't stop. You don't stop. Yeah, well, until you do, and then you know. But, yeah, I've heard that line. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, so yeah, <laughs> so, so so you know, some useful information. Uh, you know, so I'm I'm getting you know, mentally ready. I'm I'm there. Yeah, but uh, just waiting for the word. At what point are you going to say enough's enough and we need to put a little pressure on these safari people <laughs> to step up and, let's be honest, no, the, do no, the right I, thing? I think it's out of my hands and it's like, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I picked the wrong person that I was inspired by. I Maybe I should have said Taylor Swift. Uh, I don't Wait a minute. <laughs> they asked you who you're inspired by? Yeah. I, we talked about this. We did? Yeah. What'd you say? I said my father. I, I didn't want to say a celebrity, oh, right. you know, do something goofy. So, you know, I, I mentioned my father, my whole situation there. And, and you know. All right. But uh, anyway. Wish I had another more news, week of suspense. Another week of suspense for everybody. Uh, yeah. Lots of uh, I mean, it's been two weeks and literally uh, major events have happened in those two weeks. Oh, up here uh, in New Jersey. I don't know if you felt it down in oh. Virginia, the earthquake. Right. No, I, I didn't feel it. I, I don't know. I don't think we felt it at all. No, I didn't. Uh, no. How terrifying was that? No, it wasn't terrifying at all. In fact, I mistook it for the wind. Uh, I believe the, the windows, I was in the bedroom at the time and the, I heard some like rattling noise going on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's that? You know? And, uh, you know, we've had some heavy duty wind uh, mm. recently, and I thought, wow, is it that windy out? 
So then I go downstairs to the computer, and it was an earthquake, and I thought it was the wind. But yeah, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel my feet moving or you know the floor you know moving anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, nothing major there. Um, we also Although had. I do remember. Uh, do you remember? I don't know how often earthquakes are in Jersey, but when I worked in Inglewood Cliffs mm -hmm. for a hot minute back in the day. <laughs> I do remember they ran us out of the building because there was an earthquake. Although I'm trying to remember if I even felt the tremor or not. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I didn't even think of that the last two weeks till you just uh, started talking. But, yeah, so maybe it's not. The what first year are you, you thinking? Because I, I think I was in New York when the last one happened. Uh, either like, uh, you know, 2010, 11, 12. Yeah, yeah, in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was working in New York, and uh, that was the last one I remembered. And yeah, that one I didn't feel at all. Yeah. Uh, nothing on that one. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this one they said was significantly uh, more intense. People said they felt it, and animals were freaking out. Yeah, I'm not um, looking forward to uh, that th that becoming more commonplace and moving down here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I'm pretty sure of the real earthquake, I would freak the f out. Yeah, and I'd be like George Costanza running over children at when the fire in that episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> then we had the eclipse. Um, now what was how much could you see from your area? I mean, they said it was eighty percent up here. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Uh, I thought somebody said it was eighty-seven percent here. Uh huh. Uh, I was a little bit uh. I don't say underwhelming, but yeah, you go out, you put on the shades, you look up, and it's like, okay, wasn't uh, like it didn't, I didn't, I, it wasn't even much darker. Mm -hmm. so, you had the shades, huh? Of course, I had the shades. Did you just stare <laughs> into the sun? <laughs> well, you know, I thought there was going to be like an announcement on my local news, you know, and I mean, it was getting kind of dark out, and uh, I, I did not have the glasses. How much did you pay for those, by the way? Uh, zero. My sister-in-law. Oh, yeah, okay. okay, good for you. I'm think they were. I'm sure they're like the old, you know, Seven Eleven ones or something. Uh -huh. You know, you just throw them away immediately after. I wonder if, like, uh, you know, con artists have boxes of uh, 3D glasses mm -hmm. that they pawn off during the eclipses. <laughs> it's like, I mean, they look very similar. Remember they the old three three D glasses? Do you remember your first ever pair of 3D glasses? I do. I think I think it was off the back of a, a cereal box. Oh, yeah. I mean, you... <laughs> was it a specific movie or? I don't know what it was for. I think it was for the box itself. You look at the box was supposedly in three D. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exciting, right? Well, hey, you're eating you're eating cereal. I mean, how how exciting can it get? But uh... having that Cheerios and the you can see the beef flying around. <laughs> I guess so. I yeah. I don't remember, but I, you know, I, I vaguely remember 3D glasses. I think there was a TV event once, and 7-Elevens were selling them. Yes, that. I are we talking about the same thing? Uh, Jaws three. I don't that's remember. What, that's my first. Jaws three. 7-Eleven okay. get the glasses, and it was Jaws three, <laughs> and it was terrible. Okay. Yeah. Is that what no, you're thinking? I've, uh... The only good 3D experiences I've had were at Disney World and, uh, you know, where they, you know, they got the high tech, you know, mm -hmm. when they they've tried to do it on TV. It's just like a yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. you know, disaster. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, the eclipse, I, you know, the coolest thing I've heard about the eclipse is other than being reminded that Earth is the only planet where an eclipse, a total eclipse is possible because of the size of the moon in relation to it, distance from Earth happens to make it the exact same size as the sun. But then I saw yesterday some teacher, did you see this? Some teacher like in 1973 or whatever, when an eclipse happened, he told them, or I guess it's 1974, 50 years from now on April, whatever it was, 10th, whatever, uh, let's, there's gonna be an eclipse and we should meet and bam, like 20 of us, Story oh, I did story. see that article. Yeah. How great is that? Yeah, that was nice. That's my favorite thing about the eclipse. Yeah. No, that was some good information you provided. Thank you, Mike. A, a touching story. Um, yeah, I sort of looked out the back door mm. uh, through a tree, mm. through clouds. Oh, boy. And I think I saw something happening. 
<laughs> Sounds like the first time I saw a naked girl. I think I saw, I think I saw, yeah, some, uh, some eclipse action. Uh, yeah. But it was cloudy. Um, so anytime there is an eclipse or eclipse talk, I'm reminded of when I was a little kid and I was reading Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. And if you remember, he got out of a particular scrape by remembering that an eclipse occurred on such and such date. And so he told the villagers or whatever, oh, the sun's going to disappear. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it just happened to be, he's saying, on June 22nd. And my, what day of the year during that summer was I reading that book? June 22nd. <laughs> yeah, that's a My monologue. little brains yeah. popped out of my head and went running down the road. I was like... Yeah, it's always exciting when you were reading a book at the same same time as the action. In the book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spring. I don't think, I don't think it ever summer. happened. Again. Um, but uh, so you told a very touching story about the eclipse. I did. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of talk about uh, the testicular eclipse that occurred in Mexico. Uh, oh. did, you, did you hear this story? Did I hear it? Is it the guy who took it? You looked at the clips and his balls come dangling down. Yeah, I, I got. I saw a buddy they, sent it. They to called me. it a I, testicular eclipse, and apparently my, this this is a, this wasn't a one time thing. This is this is a Latin American prank that's been going on for a while in different countries. Apparently, there was a, a testicular uh, eclipse in Chile. But this this occurred uh, in Mexico. Uh, people, uh, the news. A news station in Mexico was accepting uh, viewers' uh, videos without screening them, apparently. <laughs> and they aired a, uh, yeah. They got a, asked. It's exactly what you, how you described it. A guy basically, you know, set up a camera behind him, mooned, and then used his balls to uh, block out the light source. In this yeah. case, it, it was the sun. Uh, you can you can do it with a light fixture. <laughs> it's, well, I had it doesn't I had have a, to be a sun. I, I had a friend sun. of mine send it to me, and I thought it was him. I didn't realize it was a hoax at first or whatever. <laughs> so I'm him. looking at, and all I could think of was, I know his wife didn't fucking film this. <laughs> uh, when did he get yeah. a tripod? Oh, too sexy, Mike. Come yeah, on now, sexy. family show. Too sexy. <laughs> too sexy. Speaking of too sexy, can I tell a quick story? Go ahead. Now it's a little raunchy. I'm gonna have to do some little dancing on lasers. Yeah, okay. I know you like it clean, and I'm gonna keep yeah. it clean. All right. However, the crux of this story, and it's funny, don't worry, Mike, is knowing what the term, what a certain term means in certain movie genres mm -hmm. that some particularly men watch mm -hmm. for enjoyment. I see. Okay. Okay. So on a whim, I decided, uh, I said, boy, why don't I put out a Craigslist ad? Strike one. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. To see if I can get together a group of people who want to talk about uh, British sitcoms that I love. Okay. Because that's where my life is right now. <laughs> so I put out, you know, hey, looking for people in the area who love, you know, Only Fools and Horses, Blackadder. Gavin and Stacy, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, love to meet up, make a little group, talk about these shows I love. Mm -hmm. uh, however, without thinking, and I didn't realize until I started getting some responses, on my subject, the headline was BBC Lovers Unite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. Yeah. Okay. I, I see where I'm, this went. I'm, yeah, Mike, you went wrong. Yeah. Mike, it's going to be fine. Yeah. No, no. I, Let BBC me is, uh, yeah, it's been uh, hijacked. Yes. Uh, so it, The number one usage doesn't appear to be the British Broadcasting Company. Right. So uh, uh, responses immediately came flooding in. Uh -huh. And I'm, oh, man. Oh, this God. is awesome. I'm going to have all this shit. Uh, open up the first one, uh, eight and a half inches power bottom. Uh, <laughs> All right. All yeah. right. Yeah. On and on and on. Uh -huh. uh, my How many pictures was, did you receive? No pictures. No pictures. Okay. No pictures. Wow. Okay. That's surprising. Uh, I got one. Uh, where are you at? 
Uh, and then a lot of like this happened recently. Yeah, last week. <laughs> last week. So and and then a lot week. of this, this lot of descriptions like of their genitalia, what they oh, wanted. Oh God! To oh my God! Uh, my other favorite was, uh, "Hey you." I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Uh, but then every every like seventh or eighth one, it'd be someone who was legitimately like, "Oh my God, I love only fools and horses." Are. So well, yeah. I you guess should, I should call through them and pick out the real ones. Yeah, yeah you should sort of uh, get their contact info and set up another page and contact I, them. I, I was quite shocked once it hit me. I realized what was I thinking. Yeah. Doing that headline, and no, you seem that's, disgusted with it. Yeah, him, right? it's it's a shame, but that's where the culture is now. It's completely in the toilet. Well, I thought it was pretty funny, but you yeah, said no, no, it is funny. I mean, but uh, I think you should have known better. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> I'm not saying I shouldn't have known better. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying I'm I'm surprised. Is, that what was wrong with British comedies? You know, well, you, yeah, yeah. You, you could have go wrong with that. You know, I'm surprised. And my own, I mean, you know, I'm a disgusting pig. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't know, but I was so excited to get this. Yeah, no, it's, you know. it's, it's in, in certain ways, it's quaint, you know, the, you, you, you didn't expect the. Can the, we applaud my innocence, Mike? Your, your innocence. Didn't, didn't somebody refer to you in the comments for last week's show as a dreamer? You did? <laughs> yeah, our, our listener, Ron hey. from. Uh, oh, yeah. From Kentucky. I like that. Yeah, no, it was a nice, it was a nice comment. Right. I, I mean, it, it was a very nice comment. Thank but, you, Ron. But, yes. But I did get a chuckle when he referred to you as a dreamer. <laughs> yeah. So, so every day since I get three or four with some very suggestive, mm -hmm. yeah, very descriptive. He, but yeah, then one you're not going to shut it down. You're just going to let it run, run its course. <laughs> well, I didn't, thing, it didn't occur to me. Thing, to this thing, I thought, I thought Craig is a, Craigslist got shut down. This is Craigslist. Oh. I, I thought it's the exact same as it was twenty years ago. I, well, I never, I never went into that world. You know, I can honestly say I did not. I'd never gone to Craigslist looking well, for anything. Well, I first looking for about, anything. <laughs> I first learned about Craigslist. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly when it started, but like, you know, two thousand one or two when I was working in real estate. And uh, they used to, they used to put a. You put, don't look uh, back on your time working in real estate as a. Uh, <laughs> I remember those times. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Your wardrobe kind of picked up a little bit. I think you were wearing a tie and everything, right? Only, uh, only outside the office. Only <laughs> meeting discreet clientele, Mike. Okay. All right. No, I. You know, I appreciated you. Were, you were making the effort. You know, it's like that's got to be a tough thing to get into, though. Oh, it's you sucks. go to school for that and everything. Yeah, you, you had to take a class. Yeah, yeah, you had it. Yeah, you, you got to get certified for things, right? Yeah. And I was right in the middle of Williamsburg during the whole explosion, <laughs> but I found myself surrounded by go getters. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was the go getter. Real estate moguls. So that tells you when I'm the go getter, that's a problem. Sharks. No, they were, but... they were all swarming and in poor innocent. Greg no. was not prepared for what he was getting into. I'll tell you off camera. It's even worse than my BBC <laughs> okay. Lovers Unite story. <laughs> but my Craigslist was the exact same then as it is now. Uh huh. But, yeah. But miss so, that whole I, miss that whole world. I thought I thought it went down in flames. I did too. I mean, I forgot. I forgot about yeah. it. Too. I thought there was. Uh, yeah, well, I think they took it. I think they illegal did stuff going on there, and I think they took away the casual encounter stuff. Or something like uh -huh. that, like okay. the sex stuff or whatever. Good but. to know. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was my week. Let's move along. <laughs> or that's still my week. Well, let's. Uh, the other big event that occurred during our uh, absence was the end of Curb Your Enthusiasm, oh. the finale, which you accurately predicted, and millions of others. <laughs> Got him going to jail. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said, well, I was hoping. I mean, it was enough jail. foreshadowing. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping to go to jail and uh, Elaine and George and Kramer and Jerry would be there. But uh, yeah, did you like the finale? No, I uh, I was disappointed. Yeah, it was just wildly. It was just crazy. They set up everything. Nothing paid off. I'm like, why did you have Bruce there? Why did you bring in this COVID stuff? 
I thought I thought you I thought you liked it. I thought um, well, I, I liked I, it when I thought that it was going to be the, you know, they just kind of ignored it after the penultimate episode. Uh -huh. Plus, like, plus, like, if you're going to lean into the whole repeat the Jerry, the Seinfeld finale, right? It should be a lot. Like, I just felt like it was a lame version of it. Like, it wasn't as good or as funny as the original Seinfeld one when they run through. I'm like, could they not get more interesting? You know, past characters like. All right, I misread. I misread some of your tweets because I thought you, you loved it. I mean, well, I, I go back and forth. I loved it. Uh huh. I'm not bummed it's over, but yeah, then I rewatch it and I get frustrated. I'm like, why? You know, mm -hmm. but I and I just start shouting at the TV. But uh, <laughs> you know, like but why you... wouldn't Cheryl, why wouldn't Cheryl be called up as a witness? Well, yeah. Nobody had a yeah. front row seat to his lunacy than her. But yeah, yeah, but. Oh. Yeah, it was like a uh, a lot of uh, don't a lot of t television shows end that way with a I you know it's called like like a greatest hits episode yeah. where they they look back and you know they they give you some yeah. flashbacks and which so is fine. You know. in, in in that respect, it was quite you know typical. Yeah, but uh, you I remember you were gushing about the uh, Jerry and uh, Larry. Yes interaction i'm like really that you thought that was superb did, that, that, it, that it warrants its own show well but just the two of them i could just watch the two of them talk you, yeah. you didn't think so i didn't think it was a particularly funny it looked like they probably just did it spur of the moment it just didn't seem prepared or anything you know the yeah. bearded lady thing right it, it, you know you well yeah that them. that i don't know what that was about but well that was that was their interaction that was their one-on-one -on -one. oh at the end when they're you know hanging out like oh this should have been the show oh and, okay that part okay even some of that you know all right but, uh i i i i i'd pay to see that but uh okay no i i can't remember all my thoughts and emotions now but i loved it and i hated it and i'm frustrated by it but i love it and i miss it and yada right. yada 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 so okay um Next item on the docket. <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff here. It's it could be a bit of a roller coaster. This show. Um, I uh, had a bit of a mystery this morning. Um, last night was recycling night. And this is a roller coaster you're taking <laughs> us on. Wow. Uh, so last night I I. What I do is I use a garbage bag to collect my recyclables, and then I transfer. You don't have to put the garbage bag in the uh, garbage can that you put your recyclables. You just throw them all in there. Mm -hmm. No bag needed. So I did that last night, and I forgot to bring the plastic bag back into the house. Mm -hmm. So this morning, I'm like, is that bag still out there? So I took a quick look in the morning. It was before the mailman comes, and I saw the bag was still there right by the garbage cans mm -hmm. where I left it. What do you mean mailman? The mailman comes and takes your trash? What? Well, no, but, you know, here, here's the thing. I was, I was going to sort of get it when I went to get the mail. Yeah, yeah, this is sort of uh, peak laziness. <laughs> I was been there, uh, brother. Why, why do two trips when you can do one? Essentially, why do, three, why do two when you can do none? <laughs> and I still had to, you know, I'd have to take the garbage can back from the curb. So I wanted to do them all in one action rather than multiple actions. Mm -hmm. So I saw the bag was still there, and I was like, okay, I'll wait until later when uh, my recyclables are taken and when the mail has been delivered. And then uh, I'll bring them, bring it, bring it back in. So um, later on, when I go to uh, get the food of the day, FOTD, <laughs> I see that the garbage bag is gone. Interesting. The mail is in its mailbox. The uh, recyclables are gone. Now I'm looking for this garbage bag. Are we accusing the postman? <laughs> Is there any other any other suspects mm. uh, that you can think of? I don't know. Anybody else possibly walking by on the street? <laughs> it Somebody was behind... already carrying a large bag. Here's the her? thing. It, it, the car, the, 
the car in the driveway was blocking where it was on the ground. Mm-hmm. So if somebody saw it, they, they'd have to be on foot, yeah, walking past the house, run up, grab the bag, run back onto the sidewalk, which would be kind of noticeable if anybody was outside at the time. Mm-hmm. And suspicious activity. But the postman, mm-hmm. he's right there. The you postman know, and his bullshit. The mailbox, the mailbox is right next to where the bag was laying on the ground, on on the on the in front of the uh, garage door. Why would a mailman take a garbage bag? I mean, I imagine in in that that their trucks, mm-hmm. you know, s- stuff can accumulate in there. Might be handy to have a garbage bag, right? Wait, this bag was. I'm trying was to establish a- motive. Was it empty? Yeah, it was empty. Oh, it was empty. Yeah. So it's an empty garbage bag laying on in front of the garage door, right, you know, five feet away from the mailbox. Hmm. Maybe it blew away. No, I looked around. There was no wind. There hmm. was no wind. Yeah, I, I, I thought of that. And so I'm I'm looking around the house. I looked under the car. I looked under a bush. Uh, it's gone. So right now, some postman is walking around Jersey just as easy as you please with your trash bag. Yeah. Why would? Why yeah, would? Why, have, well, the why is the bit in the major. I question. have the answer. Well, yeah. Okay. He saw it as trash, and he put he threw it in the trash can somewhere. But here's the thing: there was a trash can right next to it. Don't. Fight. I looked. I looked in the trash can. I thought that's what he did, too. I'm like, oh, he did me a favor. He put it in the trash can that's sitting right next to it. No, it's not And then you there. went to confirm? Why, would, why wouldn't you just say, oh, great, he threw it in the trash can? And get, you know. Well, I, I, I wanted the, the bag back. I, I, I wanted to still use it. It's a, you know, it's a perfectly usable plastic bag. Well, what are you going to say? head shaker. I, I see you shaking your head because it is a head shaker. It's a head yeah. shake. I'm literally yeah. shaking my head. <laughs> Are you going to see him tomorrow? Well, that's that's my question to you, and people mm-hmm. can leave their comments. Would you would you ask your mailman who you suspect of taking an empty garbage bag whether he took it? Yes. Okay. I mean, if it's driving you this crazy, of course <laughs> I would. <laughs> you wouldn't? No. No, I don't return food. I'm the worst. See, I, I, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about I'd be coy at first. I, I, I the first question would be, did you right, deliver? Let's, let's practice. I'll be the mailman. Do, 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 do. Hey, Mike, how you doing? How's your mail service been? Hey, did you deliver the mail yesterday? Are you not going to answer my question about how I've been doing? Oh yeah. Say it again. How's my How's your mail service been? It's been very good. Thank you. You're welcome, Mike. You've By the way, been like a customer. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I don't know what some of these packages I, I I keep delivering are, but it's none of my business either. So <laughs> I didn't I didn't deliver I didn't give him a tip this Christmas, so mm. I don't know if there's a grudge going on there. That's that's what I'm thinking. You know, is he is he is he trying to mess with my head by taking his garbage bag in revenge for not giving him a, a Christmas tip? Well, if that's his biggest idea for revenge, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, it's take, it's it's take it's, the L. <laughs> it's small time. It's small time. I agree. But what if he comes look, back look, with look, it, look, look, look what he's done. He he's already gotten into my head. I thought he, you were gonna he, say he turned he turned your hair gray. He turned my like, hair gray. I, I got news he, for you, Mike. He turned my hair gray, and and now I can't stop thinking about what happened to that damn garbage bag. What if he comes back with it tomorrow? Like, like <laughs> one that would, piece of garbage. That would time. that would be the real, uh, yeah. What? Oh, what, if, what if he comes back? You're standing there. He has the empty bag. He waves it at you, drops it down. And he says, "Hey, thanks for letting me borrow that," and just walks off. <laughs> like you. Yeah. Well, you okay. Do? Mystery solved. That's what I would say. I, I think you lots need of to... unexplainables, but uh, mystery solved. I think you need, for two reasons, you need to confront him tomorrow. Number mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. this is obviously important to you. Number two, if you don't, see, here's where we differ as a man of the South. Uh, in, times when it's, in times gentleman. when it's convenient. A, a Southern gentleman. As a Southern gentleman when it's convenient for myself. <laughs> but you're a man of Jersey. 
Jersey men do not sit around. <laughs> man of confrontation. Men. Yeah. Yes, they don't let postmen yeah, steal no. their garbage. It's without not the Bayonne style. Not the Bayonne style. No. So you need to let them know. So you can take the man out of Bayonne, but you can't take the Bayonne out of the man. Yeah, and let's just keep him in Bayonne. He doesn't need, he <laughs> no, doesn't need to be getting he's out of Bayonne, and, he, and he, he's in a different environment, and he, he's struggling to adapt. That's what's well, happening. You, well, you let him know how we, they do it in Bayonne. So. Yeah. And we got another mystery. So next time, hopefully, we'll have an answer on this <laughs> and this guitar. So many, so many questions. Uh, no. I'm going to dip right into a new one. Um, I'm sure you'll have some uh, interesting insight on this one. I'm, sure. I'm going to borrow a topic from uh, this week's Double Threat okay. with uh, our friends Julie Klausner, Tom Sharpling, and Brett Bowen. Bowen. Does that mean they have to listen to this now that we mentioned them? <laughs> I know they're not listening. But uh, so anyway, I'm just acknowledging I'm going to steal one of their topics. Hey, they were, they were talking. I like it. <laughs> they were talking about uh, dog earring a library book. Okay. You're okay with that? Well, I mean... As it, a son of a librarian. Yes. Uh, as the son of a librarian, if it's from generally enjoying and reading a book like a normal person, and then, you, you know, you, you know, like, how, how hard is, how hard are these people dog-earing? And is that like dogging is in England? See, I'm, I'm anti-dog-ear in general. Mm-hmm. I now, mean, when you say dog ear, do you mean fold it where you're like a bookmark? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I don't do that anyway. I don't use it. Okay, them, all right, all right. So you're so. you're you're anti uh, dog earring. Uh, too. I wouldn't say I'm anti. I I just never do it. But all I'm right. sympathetic. I mean, but you do it for a reason, right? I mean, I don't do it. I've just no. never. Yeah, I always yeah. remember. Well, you end. don't do it. That's what I'm saying. You don't dog ear your book. But I but I understand it. I'm fine uh -huh. with that as a, okay. as a library book. All I right. mean, let's be honest. Can we be happy that people are going to the library? <laughs> the library is one of uh -huh. the most single greatest American institutions. Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed that I don't uh -huh. take advantage of it like I should. Uh, so I, I can think of nothing but encouraging. And, the, and you know, they do a little dog airing, which I didn't know was a verb until three minutes ago. <laughs> That's fine, too. Do you See, disagree? Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely say have a little more respect for public proper, property. I mean, if it's well, if well, you if it's your own book, yeah, go go yeah. to town, you know. And they talk about uh, mass market paperbacks and how it's almost your duty to trash that book <laughs> while you're reading it, you know, yeah. you know, because those books, yeah, they 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 usually have a rough life, and that's what they are. They're they're mass market paperbacks. Mm -hmm. Beat it up all you want, but you I'm know, not like you I said, have to go out of your way to beat it up. But if yeah. it's just the normal, you know, yeah, no, if it, if it's your own property, um, you know, uh, yeah, go ahead, do what you want. Well, but here's the payroll. thing: here's the thing, and this is what I would have, how I would have inserted myself in the conversation, because they were saying like, well, what if you don't have bookmarks available? Hmm. Bookmarks are all over the place. I agree with that. You can and, make your and, own book. And, and here's one of my favorites. Every magazine, right? You got yeah. this month's Harper's Magazine. It's got some good articles. Yeah. Got some reviews. Well, look what it's got. Well, right I don't, in are the we middle, being sponsored right by in Harper's? The There's yeah. your bookmark. Pull it out. Yeah. I agree. You pull it out. Uh, not only one. I, think I agree. You can one. find. Look, you can what, find... Holy cow! There's another one. Two bookmarks. Yeah. Two free bookmarks with every magazine. I mean, you can use a piece of toilet paper, <laughs> unused, yeah. as a bookmark. I agree. There's no excuse not to use a bookmark. They're all around you, but, but I don't want to. I'm not getting too upset about uh, mm -hmm. if they do. I'm just happy there at the library. Uh -huh. And like, how, are you really gonna flip out if you know you? You get a book and it's a little dog eared. Are you not going to read the book? No, I'm not going to flip out, but it's come on, it's, it's disrespectful, you know. It's like not, you said, it's, 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 a, it's a great institution. Yeah, let's keep it's, let's think about others who are coming through. Sometimes people go heavy with those bookmarks, and yeah. over time, yeah, you're going to lose a corner of the page, it's, it's just going to deteriorate, you, you know. You can abuse it, but what are the odds of so many people checking out the same book and bookmarking the same page? 
ear, oh, I'm sorry, dog ear in the same page that it does become a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, how did they uh, rule, Julie and Tom? Um, yeah, they were against they were against the dog earring. If it's oh. not if it's not your property, you know. So you said me up to just look like no, that. it's it's not. <laughs> you know, you you you're always surprising me. I I don't know how you're going to respond. You know, technically you're you're sort of, sort of on on our side, but you were a little looser than uh, I expected. I thought you were going to be a little firmer. No, no, no. Hey, hey, bigger problems in the world, Mike. Let's... Uh huh. <laughs> Well, I'm going to oh, keep it going. Books. Speaking of books, uh, uh -huh. I see you read 84 Charing Road. No, I didn't read that. I, I read the uh, the wiki page. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I was so excited. I, <laughs> I was like, I just stumbled into it a week before. I'd never heard of it. And then you know, I read it. And I'm like, oh, my God, is there a book other than... <laughs> Is there a book Mike hasn't read other than no. the Killer Mike? No, I didn't. I didn't hear it. I, I never heard of it before. You, you've uh, been you've been dipping into like some obscure stuff, like that book. What was it? Uh, and then that that West the the Revolutionary Era book, uh, something in the Valley, Darkness, Darkness in the Valley, or what was that one? I can't remember. <laughs> but you, this, you, this, this is this one's great because uh, it, it's short. You can basically read it on an hour train ride or something. And it's, it's just, uh, what do they call it? Epistemological. It's made up of letters back. Letters. And forth. Yeah. Uh, never have to read books. Clarissa. Oh my God. That, that book was brutal. Yeah. Uh, I, I was excited. I thought we could talk about it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> no, but I, I just finished. Another I went book. to the wiki page. <laughs> uh, I just finished another book. Uh, my first boss out of college, David uh -huh. McGee, uh, own, he was the owner of Sir Speedy. My first job was as a graphic designer at Sir Speedy, and uh, he and then you know I moved to Brooklyn, but he went on to write a couple of books, a bunch of books actually, very successfully. And he wrote a book about the moon pie. I don't know why I paused for dramatic effect there. Okay, the and, the, uh, the uh, dessert, the the snack treat. Yeah. Uh, so on a whim, I or I picked it up and read it uh, the other day, and it was it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. um that's another another little quick book so okay. it'd be be cool to have him on to talk about it since it is food but uh well i'm uh, gonna uh, keep going he tells embarrassing stories about me and all the uh old miss girls back in the day <laughs> okay i'm gonna tell i'm gonna get back on the bookmark uh i've got another beef oh with uh i don't know if you saw my earlier tweet to the library of america which i've i've praised over and over on this show you know yeah. If, if you get a chance, if you're looking to get into an author and there's a Library of America volume out on, on you know, it's a good value. I mean, usually they got about three, you know, full books within mm -hmm. uh, one book, you know, 30 bucks. So it's like pretty good value. And here's the thing. I'm just coming off of I was reading some Sherwood Anderson stories, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Um and here, here's the thing. They they come with a built-in bookmark. All right. I'm going to show you. Here's the book. Like a tassel? Yeah, a tassel. The old tassel. Like oh. We can't see. Oh, there we, we go. See. Yeah. Like a hymnal. Yeah, like a hymnal. Yeah. All right. Comes with the book. That's nice. No extra I, charge. Surprised that's not more... Uh, it's classy, you know, right? It's classy. Right? Now, now that I've, we've thought of it, I'm a little surprised they're not more prevalent. You know, throughout books. Yeah, well, it's probably an extra expense, and there's some accountant saying, "Hey, let's we can save fifteen cents per book." All <laughs> right, easy. <laughs> same as same accountant as uh, the one that I have uh, Boeing, I guess. But but here's the thing: the the new uh, a, a new edition uh, of from the Library of America, mm -hmm. Ursula Le Guin collected poems. Right, mm -hmm. look at that. It's gone. The accountants got to the Library of America. Come on, man. No more bookmark. No more bookmark. What did it cost? 0 0.1 cents? Yeah. And it's a non-profit. This place is a non-profit. It's not even a for-profit publishing company. That's some well, book. I got to share with Anderson out. I, I, I was reading this book, Greg. Mm -hmm. Some really great stories. I read, uh, I mean, I recommend, you know. Is it Winesburg, Ohio? Well, that's in this volume. Okay. You get that. And I hadn't read any of his other collections. So I read uh, 
Triumph of the Egg, and then uh, Death in the Woods, which had some great stories in it. And I then I, I sort of skipped around, read some other other stories that are in this. And uh, I read this story, uh, an Ohio pagan. And uh, it's about, you know, a young guy. And, it, you know, he sort of becomes fixated. Uh, he's working in, on a farm. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the farmer would uh, pray. And he, he was intrigued by this uh, this farmer praying at night. And he would just sort of watch him from afar. Why was then, he so intrigued by that? He, he's just, you know, I guess he, you know, yeah, it's, it's watching somebody pray is kind of interesting, right? I mean, in itself. Is it? Well, you know, it can be. But then he, I mean, if he somebody's sort of... sitting there in the middle of the street praying or <laughs> middle of the room, yeah, praying, yeah, I'd be, I'd notice it. And I think that's weird. Uh -huh. But anyway, so he gives it a try later on in the story. Uh, he, he's, the, you know, he's he's getting older, a little more mature. He's getting interested in in women, and uh, he comes up with a prayer, his own prayer. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, this would be a great prayer for Greg. Oh boy, it's short and it's sweet, just like me. Here it is. Repeat after me. Oh, is it, are you, are, are you going to are you tricking me into marrying you? <laughs> no, no. Is that what no, this is? No, it's a short, sweet prayer that I think. I think we should we should try this for a month. Okay. And see if the power of prayer works. Let's do it. So here, here's the prayer, and repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Jesus. That's it? I mean... No, no, keep... You, you can go no, a couple more no, words. No, you, you repeat it. I'm breaking it up into two parts I for you. I can handle more than one word, but okay. Jesus. Bring me a woman. This is for me. Bring me <laughs> a woman. That's it. That's the prayer. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, I do like that. C can you remember it? Well, I've said it a thousand times. <laughs> so, Jesus. So, so just add me a woman. Just, just add the Jesus part. Be mm -hmm. sincere. Well, that's and, a and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, you know, with you for the next month, I'm gonna say, Jesus, bring Greg a woman. <laughs> <laughs> like he, Jesus, Jesus is a servant. Like you know, he's like he's serving you. Bring he works me, for me. You know, I instead pay of like his taxes. Bring me a bottle of water. It's uh Jesus, bring me a woman. So uh it's tricky because you're tempted to say, Jesus Christ, bring mm -hmm. me a fucking woman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to start Jesus. It's hard to start mm -hmm. a sentence with Jesus without doing it. Jesus. Well, what that's what I'm saying. You, you, you gotta be you gotta be humble, you gotta be sincere, even though. I don't know. I mean, as a prayer, like I said, it's a little presumptuous, you know, like like you're treating the Lord as if he's a waiter, which is a you waiter. Know, well, just bring Where are me. You going you, to, what restaurant? Like, you you, you're to? like, bring me, bring brain, bring me is a little, you know, how about, you know, something a little more like if you could, if you could, yeah, exactly. Jesus, if you could, if you could if, if, at if, your if, earliest if, convenience. If, yeah, that's the way to do it. If it's cool. Uh huh. Could you possibly, again, <laughs> please feel free to say no. Uh -huh. I won't get mad. Yeah. If you could please bring a woman that may have some interest in me romantically so that I may share some love in the go. name of your bounty. There you go. Uh, yeah, but feel I'll free. That to Jesus, bring me a woman. <laughs> now, can I pull off being sincere? Yeah, that's a little. Yeah, you, you got. I think you've got to work on that part of it, the sincerity part. Jesus, bow your head. Bow your head. Stay prayed up, as uh, Mark Wahlberg was saying. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna. I'm gonna check with you the next four weeks. I'm gonna I'm, do it every I'm, day. I'm just gonna go, Greg. Are you stay? Are you stay? Are you staying prayed? Up, prayed up? You prayed up, Mike. I'm all prayed up. <laughs> I'm gonna say it when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. When I go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 test the power of prayer. All right. What do you mean? As in, if if Jesus I'm, brings I'm, a woman, I'm going to say prayers. Anything? Prayer can I'm, do anything. I'm if gonna, it can bring a woman, say prayers for you know, alongside you. I mean, I'm going to be praying too. I mean, I'm a lost cause. So I'm so pathetic. <laughs> as far as that, no, no, I, no, you're not pathetic at all. You need I'm to pray saying, for me too. I'm saying I'm a lost cause. I mean, if we were saying Jesus bring me a woman, I'm like, well, yeah, I disagree. I, that's, I, 
That's I a think long we can, shot. I think That's we can say bring you a woman too. You're no more of a long <laughs> shot than me. I don't know. I've got 10 years on you. I mean, I'm flattered and I'll, you know, brag a bit to everybody what you said, but uh, <laughs> well, I, I I hope it works. Jesus, okay. bring me a woman. Like, you, you don't even say please? Like No, just, yeah, just be sincere. I think sincerity is the part of, the main part of it. Maybe and then that, what that, if what if he does bring me a woman? Then are we just gonna go crazy? Jesus bring me a man. Yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna yeah, we're gonna be uh I guess we're gonna be uh, soldiers in Christ. If I show if I get echo young and it shows up without the gravy, I'll yeah. say Jesus bring me gravy. <laughs> hey, if he can bring me a woman, he can bring well, me. Yeah, let's let's start. Yeah, this is this is a big this is a tall order. You know, maybe we'll have to knock it down in size. <laughs> but uh I, I just thought of that when I when I read in that story. Jesus, bring me a woman. That's pretty good. I, I almost believed it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Because um, I was joking. Uh, I'm I'm time. I'm ready for a sugar mama. <laughs> uh, if any any sugar mamas out there. Uh, I, sugar I'm open, mamas, okay. I'm open for business, and uh, to be honest, at this stage, well, it, maybe that's your prayer. Jesus, bring, bring me a sugar mama. Bring, bring me a sugar mama. But, but I'm at the age where uh, sugar daddy, bring me a sugar daddy. <laughs> either one. Because let's be honest, at this <laughs> age, either one. Well, at this uh -huh. age, let's be honest. Even if I do find someone, uh -huh. well, let's be honest. Like maybe once a year we'll have sex, maybe, and even uh -huh. then. It's going to be like, all right, thank you. That's all right. Let's move on with our lives. Mm -hmm. Might as well be with a dude too. If, if if sugar daddy's just as easy. I always I, I always remember a conversation I had with a, a customer uh, at one of the bars I worked at in Bayonne. He was he was in his fifties, early early mid fifties, and uh, you know he had, he wasn't married, but he had a regular. Uh, girlfriend, you know, that they spent a lot of time together. They weren't living together, but, you know, they they, they were literally uh, in a relationship. But then, you know, he just he's just complaining one time, just off the cuff, saying, you know, basically that after a certain age, the choreography of sex becomes absurd, you yeah. know, and I, <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't really agree with him more because, I mean, yeah, the body the aging body, you know, the movements involved, uh, you know, you've got different uh, aches and pains in different regions that it, it does become different price points. <laughs> it, does, it does become absurd. And, you know, let's face it, you know, the, uh, the biological function of, of, of sex is no longer there. So it's, yeah, it's all, uh, it better choreography. Be it's choreography. <laughs> That did not be there when I'm doing it. <laughs> I, well, I heard Cheryl Crow say something weeks ago. I don't know why the hell I was listening to Cheryl Crow on a podcast. Uh, you, you, you're, you're watching those Bill Moore things? Was that what it was? I think she was on there. I, I didn't see it, but I, 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 I saw that she was on there. I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I'll pass on that one. Because she, She's an all-time Miss Wilson, so I'll pop in. <laughs> she's got some delightful chompers. Uh, and she said something about like, she's like, at this point, at my age, she's 10 years older than me. Uh, she's like, uh, she said something to the effect of like, uh, if I'm having sex, I want it to be funny, too. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's well, right up my street. Yeah, that's. Uh... She, didn't say, she didn't say fun. She said, might as well be funny. Yeah, well, that's acknowledging the absurdity. So, yeah, you might as well be having a few laughs. Yeah, like you know, I, I don't doubt that it can still be good, but I do like, uh, in theory, because you know, it's not like I've had it in this century. Uh -huh. uh, I do like the idea of like, let's try to have this wonderful moment while acknowledging, you know, when you're young, it has to be like either super special or you have to prove that you're a super stud or whatever, or you have to explain why so and so is filming it. And I like the idea of let's agree we're gonna have a laugh and fun, uh -huh. while also doing this incredible, uh, th this thing that feels incredible. Yeah. And so I like that. So Cheryl Crow's listening. <laughs> I, I am open to having <laughs> funny sex with you, Cheryl. <laughs> Putting it out there. If anybody in the comments, 
You've got you've got give me a touch with Shell Crow. You've got a few quips ready. Oh man, for Shell Crow, yeah, I'll, I'll be funny. <laughs> Maybe you can work on some quips for next week. You can share some of your best quips for, you know, <laughs> Cheryl Crow seduction quips. Yeah, if anybody out there has a direct line to Shell Crow, uh -huh. uh, I'd let her know that I am willing to have a uh, relationship, and she'll have plenty of laughs. Yeah. We'll both get what we want, uh -huh. and it'll be beautiful. Man, you're right. This praying thing is incredible. <laughs> it's working already. <laughs> the uh, you know, I'm always on the the lookout for promotion, uh, for the podcast. Um, oh boy! You know, some of your attempts at viral videos has come up short, to say oh. the least. <laughs> oh gee. <laughs> Could you? Well, listen. <laughs> Think of a more matter of factly sh shittier way to say that. I've got I've got an idea. Well, I haven't had a video in a couple of weeks. Uh huh. Now I've got, got an idea. idea. I'm I'm gonna run it by you. Hit hit the hit the go viral button at the end of the video. <laughs> but I've been doing that. No. Uh. You you we've talked about reaction videos before. We're both fans of these videos of young people discovering older music. And they 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 film themselves listening to the songs, the classic songs. What do first old people time. listen to the young music? Well, yeah. Let, let let me hear me out. I I you know I got you know once you get on those reaction videos, you 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 just one after the other. You just keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and, and so I I came across a few reaction videos to you know Neil Young's song Old Man. Ugh. Well, Old all right. Man. Yeah. Okay, you don't like this song, but hear me out. All right. I saw like three or four reaction videos just to that song. And not one of them had less than 80,000 views. 80,000 views. All right. For, for a 10-minute video. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, we couldn't pull that off. But what if we flip the script, as the kids say? Flip the script, my glass. <laughs> Do the topsy turvy. What if we had two old men, and you know, I'm clearly older than you, but you know, let's say you're older. <laughs> <laughs> two two old guys, and we're doing reaction videos to every single Taylor Swift song. Young you, Michael, you are scratching me where I itch. Are the wheels turning? Does this sound like? Like start in the beginning and go song by song? Yeah, song by song. She is such a phenomenon. Let's get a little bit of that action. Have have our That's videos have some, shame have on some, you. Have our videos popping up as recommended next to her official videos. Now, would you say what it would be is we hit song one? If song one is three and a half minutes, that means we talk for three and a half minutes. Well, well we have to do it by ourselves. We can't meet up 9,000 times and do this shit. No. Not that I, don't I think there's a way to do it. it. it just, I mean, I, I, I haven't looked into how you, 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 you get the song playing in the background and you cut in. And uh, that's what they, a lot of them do that. They cut in in the middle of the song, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then they let it play. You see, so You see them... And then they have like a little box. Or little yeah, exactly. Box. Yeah, there must stop. be some sort of template. So, you know, when you film it, you know, me and you could be in little boxes and maybe the official video is playing mm -hmm. or or just, you know, they they sometimes if, if a song doesn't have a video, they just have the lyrics or something. Um, How are we going to do this, though? There's like 300 Taylor Swift songs. <laughs> I don't know. Just think about it. You know, uh, I'm all in. I'd love to do yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, if if people know how to do these videos, I, I guess they must be stri straightforward how to do. Uh, but if you have tips, you know, if there's a a, a a website where they set it all up for you, you just have to plug in your Zoom uh, cameras somehow. Well, we need interns for. Yeah, <laughs> we need interns. Uh, let us know in the comments. But uh, did you see what Courtney Love said about Taylor Swift? Yeah, she took a, a easy shot, right? I mean. Well, I, I I think I tweeted earlier. I'm like, I feel like I can agree with her. Like, I don't really care about Taylor Swift's music or Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of respect for it. It's just not my thing. I'm uh -huh. music, but I think you can all you can say that 
while also saying, why are we giving a fuck what Courtney Love says about anything? <laughs> well, that's it. You know, I mean, um, she's hardly riding the, riding high in the charts these days herself. So uh, talking about relevance of music, um, I think it's all fleeting. Uh, I've tried to listen to Taylor Swift with an open mind. I've given it a shot. I've listened to a full album. Mm -hmm. uh, that made the Rolling Stones top 100 country albums. She, she had one in, in that list. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let, this, maybe this is the one. I'll give it a shot. What do you think? No, it, it didn't really, nothing. Not, not, nothing stood out. Uh, like I said, I, I it took me about five viewings to get through her concert movie. <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> I did it. I, I watched the entire thing. I, I You know, this is my devotion to the cultural zeitgeist is that the word <laughs> and we thank you i'm just There's i want to know song. what's going on out there right people love this why do they love it so mike's got to dip his toe in and see what's what's all the fuss about and uh because he's an old man maybe he doesn't get it <laughs> Does he know he's referring to himself in the third person? <laughs> As Mike finally lost it on air. There is, I do have one song, one uh -huh. Taylor Swift song I do love, uh, Out of the Woods, uh, which I discovered during a four-year four period during which I may have led my goddaughter and her sister to believe that Taylor Swift and I were dating. Uh, so you can imagine their disappointment every time I'd show up. Good shot. Uh, <laughs> Where, where's Taylor Swift? Where's your girlfriend? I, oh, she's, you know, she can't be going around, you know, in public. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had that going for about three or four years. So mm -hmm. and I somehow stumbled into Out of the Woods. And I, I, I like that song. Well, Shake It Off. Uh, like I said, you know, I mean, that's the one that sort of permeated, you know. You know, there was a time when popular music was unavoidable, right? The popular right. songs would just percolate up. And you'd hear them on TV. It still happens once in a while, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, you know, I I, I heard a, a a new Beyonce song in the Italian deli. I, I wasn't expecting that, you know. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess that's the song catching on. The new one, yeah. She covered Blackbird. She covered Blackbird. She covered Jolene. Mm -hmm. uh, but the song, I guess they're playing is uh, "Take Them and Fold Them" or. Texas Fold'em? Texas Fold'em. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Texas Hold'em. And it's a pretty catchy song. Yeah. So I guess that's getting a lot of airplay. And that's, that's the way popular music used to work. But now it's like you hear like, oh, you know, these songs are huge. And it's like, well, how come I've never heard it? You know, shouldn't I, shouldn't yeah. I hear this song if it's so huge? Well, I hated that stupid "Shake It Off" song. I'm like, not well, just that, obvious, yeah. but like, if you're writing a song called "Shake It Off," it's uh -huh. obviously you are having trouble shaking it off. <laughs> uh, but uh -huh. yeah, um, I had something else brilliant to say, but you know, <laughs> let it I'm out. All let it out. <laughs> I saw you. Yeah, you you tried to uh, set set me up with a video on on Twitter. Uh, some guy going through the Kinks versus the Rolling Stones uh, discography. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I should have known. Blow out. It was a a Kinks super fan. It was a route. It was a route. What was it, 167 or something? Something like that. It was very back loaded. Like six of the Stones albums were like after the, you know, like 80s. Like, come on. Well, yeah, I mean, but the, you know, he he's he's picking Kinks albums from the '80s that uh, had like one or two good songs on them. So better than the songs. So I'm not I'm not <laughs> saying no. I I I I've got more than one song from every uh, Stones album on my play my Spotify playlist. If people still want to get in on that action, are they are they still clamoring for that? Yeah, I think I've got like ten. Ten followers. <laughs> you see what I posted? Yeah, ten more than me. You see what I posted about? Um, I realized or dawned on me that my three favorite Kink songs and uh, maybe five out of my top ten are all one-word titles: Arthur, Days, Stranger. So then I thought but not Lola. Come on. 
that's a, that's up there and right. victoria victoria yeah right. um uh -huh. but so then i thought well what other so i thought is that weird so i thought uh, my other songs by my favorite bands one title songs uh for instance the beatles my favorite one word song is rain mm -hmm. do you have one I mean, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, right? yeah. No, Rain's or a good one. Band, though. Like Rain's a good, good one. But I mean, the, the Beatles did have. I was thinking of women's names as song titles, and you know, the the Kinks and the Beatles were both good at that. You know, Michelle and Eleanor Rigby and Julia. Julia, yeah. I mean, Birthday is a one one word song. Mm -hmm. uh, like the the Ramones, I picked uh, Babysitter. Mm -hmm. uh, the replacements, unsatisfied, obviously. Any thoughts on this? <laughs> it's a little uh, too. Uh... No, I like themes of songs. You know, Mara. I picked like, like I said, women's uh, names. You know, like number of words. Or why don't you go go further, man? Why don't I you think go? We're running past each into other. number of syllables. <laughs> uh, and then I got to be super five cheeky. syllable song. I about picked, six uh, syllable songs. The best heyday song, one <laughs> one word, Mississippi. Uh, I'm so cheeky. Uh, well, all right, I thought that'd be interesting. Bob Dylan has a pretty good song called Mississippi. Have you checked that one out? Yeah, it's not as good. <laughs> it's pretty pretty good. Cheryl oh, Crow. Be your Cheryl poll. Crow even did a cover. My 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 future girlfriend. Yeah, check out Cheryl Crow, Mississippi. She did a with her funny sex. Uh, nice. All right, you should do one of your famous polls. Which Mississippi is better? Mm. I think I know who's going to win. <laughs> Heyday versus Bob Dylan. That's right. They should check out both. Yeah. Hey, hey, let the fans decide <laughs> let for the themselves. Fans decide. I know which one I like. Yeah. All right. Well, I thought you might like this subject, but you're shitting on it and <laughs> hate me for it. So let's get to uh, this week's meal. I went to uh, Red Moon Pizza. Red Moon Pizza. Established. In 1968. Good year. And I've been going there ever since. Really? Yeah. I mean, wow. this this is like the closest pizzeria mm -hmm. to me down here. And even when I was up in Bayonne, when I'd come down here, I'd go to Red Moon every once in a while. So they had a fire uh, that, that put them out of business for a uh, a year or so. But other than that, yeah, I've been going to this place my entire lifetime. Do you have a business where you've been going your entire lifetime? Well, I mean, I don't live there anymore, but it's still there. But when I was growing up, I we had our own pizza place in town called Roma's. And it was unusual for our, you know, tiny southern town uh, in that it was very authentic, like New York, because the family had moved down from New uh, York. Relocated, huh? And, like, the the legend was... They got their ingredients from New York. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I lived in New York for 15 years, and that pizza was right up, up there. Stands wow, up okay. behind you. Yeah. yeah, that's they good. Since, they since moved buildings, and it's all changed. It's not as good. but mm -hmm. and, and part of it might be a Proustian thing, you know, your first pizza or whatever. But uh -huh. that opened up a town in 76. And as early as I can remember, you know, years after, a couple of years after that, uh, uh, going there. So I, I guess I'd say that. Uh, yeah. My number one Chinese restaurant closed down like 10 years ago. So. Ah, too bad. Thank you. But uh, yeah, no, Red Moon. Um, What'd you get? Yeah, quality pizza. Everything's quality. Uh, I got, you know, there was a little special sort of deal here called Luna Salad. You get it? Luna. Yeah. Spanish Moon. Moon. Um, Is this because of the eclipse? <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't think about it that way. But yeah, it makes sense, right? I bring it all together, bro. So your Luna salad has the it's dark over here. Wait, you went to this pizza place and got a salad? Yeah, I did. You oh, know, that was just... my. Oh, I'm sorry. That was one of my big beefs with the curb final. Oh yeah. They make a big deal. I go to Auntie Ray's. Right. Like and and they get salads and they rave about the salads. Yeah. I'm sorry. A Auntie Ray is a sassy. Older black lady from New Orleans opening a restaurant in Atlanta, and you're doing high fives over salad. That's nuts. Yeah, that scene. Yeah, the, the dressing. That yeah, 
It became a, a big uh, thing about the dressing. Yeah. I'm going to Auntie Ray's. I'm not getting a salad. So that I thought that was crazy. So the, the Luna salad has mesclan lettuce, which is not the crispy lettuce that you prefer, but it's not the wilted. Rough start, Mike. Rough no, start. it's pretty good. It, it's still crunchy. It's a little crunchy, the, mes the mesclan lettuce. Uh, had grilled chicken, uh, cucumbers, uh, cherry tomatoes, uh, red red peppers, red onions with a balsamic uh, vinaigrette, and uh, Solid. I added shrimp. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Baby steps, baby steps. That's what people should do if ever I'm ever around and they're scared of me uh -huh. taking, you know, dipping in and taking their food. Just put shrimp on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, you didn't get any pizza? No. Well, no, I got. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know how you 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 know my mind now. I, I I thought about getting a couple slices to go, but they had a couple sausage rolls up there, and I was like, yeah, I never had a sausage roll from Red Moon, believe it or not, in all these years. Well, when I think of a sausage roll, I think of the you know the British sausage roll, which I love. I mean, who wouldn't love them? What's the sausage roll at an Italian place? Well, it's sausage, peppers, and onions, and they give you like a dipping sauce with it. Oh, so it's like basically a sub or a sandwich. Kind of, but it's you know, usually it's a hot sandwich. Yeah. Can we get a Can we get a picture of this pizza for next time? Uh, the pizza or the uh, sausage roll? Both. <laughs> okay, I'll get some slices next week. I mean, I, they've gotten fancy. They've got they've got some fancy slices. I saw, I saw some grandma slices, which I don't think I've ever seen up there before. And they had a white pizza that looked like it had chicken and, and unidentifiable stuff on. I was tempted, but yeah, th that's what I'll do. I'll get get another salad next week. I'll get a couple slices, just to. Uh, Fully endorsed Red Moon Pizza in Howell Township. You know what? I could look at, I'm sure they exist, but a coffee table book of pizza slices around the country. But like not crazy fancy, just plain cheese, like the classic New York slice. I could just watch, I could just flip and look at pages and pages of that. It's funny you uh, mention that. Oh, thank you, Mike. I I got to tell you about my salad too after, after, after you. A very Chinese that. cookbook. Are you this cooking? Was, well, this was sent to me by our friend in Switzerland. Oh, Tim, awesome. Tim in Switzerland Tim. sent this book. Um, he, he, you know, he's he he sort of. Tim, please bring me a woman. He bookmarked. He bookmarked a few recipes. You know, I I, I want to be cooking more. I, you know, and there are some recipes in here that look somewhat simple. But uh, I don't know if I'll be jumping into this right away. I should yeah. I should uh, mention that uh, it is written by a father and son, mm -hmm. Kevin Pang and Jeffrey Pang. They're good. And guess what? They have a podcast called uh, Pang These Nuts. <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> no, For man. those who can't see, Mike Pangs. is laugh, falling off his chair laughing. Pangs, pangs, pangs. Anything come to mind? Hunger pangs. Hunger? Hunger pangs. You know what? I like that. Yeah. Pretty good. So thank you, Tim, for that book. Uh, <laughs> I will maybe get to doing it. Um, but I can't yeah. make any can't make any promises at this time. Can I ask if one of the dishes he marked was egg foo young? Well, there, there's where you're gonna be disappointed. Um I looked, I looked, I looked high and low. <laughs> I I turned every page. Oh. Uh, no, no egg fung fu young uh, recipe. Thanks anyway, Tim. But anyway, back to my uh, before I get too distracted. The salad was very good. Um, I I did end up with a, a fair amount of uh, lettuce at the bottom. <laughs> the dressing was good though. Uh, fair amount, lot lots of chicken. Mm -hmm. Uh, for uh, what did I spend? You know, I, I, you know, I was feeling uh, feeling generous, and I went for the added shrimp. So I think I think there were about five or six shrimp. So that comes to about a dollar a shrimp. 
Oh. <laughs> so, Was it maybe, your birthday and Christmas? Maybe, yeah, not, not exactly a bargain there with the shrimp. But <laughs> uh, but they were tasty. You'll, you'll see the photos tomorrow on social media. Well, it sounds like I have never once ordered like a prepared salad by the menu because I'm so there's always something I don't like on it. Uh huh. But it's other than the shrimp, I feel like I could have uh, I could have dug into that salad. Oh no, it was good. It, it, you know, the greatest compliment I can give you, Mike. It was uh, it was very tasty. Uh, the grilled chicken was good. The dressing was good. Um, the shrimp was good. So yeah, good experience. Mm-hmm. Ate everything but the lettuce. Well, oh, I, I, I ate some lettuce. <laughs> I I ate some lettuce, but there's. <laughs> I, you know, it's it's in the fridge, so I can I can just jump back into it. Yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> I want to introduce a subject. Maybe we've talked about other things. We didn't call it. <clears throat> I had had a very disappointing meal this week. Um, Salad, the lettuce. No, this was. Uh, <clears throat> I went out Sunday night. I didn't go to my uh, local establishment. They have a sister. A bar restaurant uh, further away up the highway on the other side of the highway. And their food is good, too. I mean, I, I just thought I'd try something different. So I went up there and they had on a special menu Chicken Murphy. All right. Ever have chick- Chicken Murphy? Is this Irish? Is it drunk chicken? No, it's, it's I can considered... say that because I'm Irish. <laughs> it's considered an, an Italian-American dish. You got chicken... You got potatoes, you got peppers, uh, you have like a sort of uh, glaze sauce. <clears throat> and it, <clears throat> I've had it in different places in Bayonne, and it's fantastic, you know, mm-hmm. uh, different uh, Italian places. So when I saw that, I'm like, wow, OK, I don't see that pop up, pop up on the menu too often down here. This has got to be good, right? They came out with this dish, and it was heavy. I mean, it, this this thing, this plate, I mean, it was like 10 pounds. I mean, I'm like, what the hell is this, you know? Yeah. Awesome. And, and, you know, there was there was some potatoes on there. The grilled chicken, usually when, when I've gotten chicken Murphy, you know, the chicken's cut up. It's, it's you know, like chunks of chicken. Mm-hmm. Chicken Murphy, I'm writing that yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Jerry... Check in with uh, what the the classic ingredients are. Jerry's gonna Jerry's keep me in check I, if I if I mention the wrong ingredients. You can only it's bullshit a, so much. It's a it's a very it's a really good dish if if you get it well made. So this thing comes out and it's like, what's going on here? You know, I'm looking for the chicken. The chicken was underneath. Well, we we've seen it before, Greg. Goop goop. It was a brown goop. Instead of like a glaze sauce, it was just laden with this brown goop, and it, it, there was just like a uh, a slice of chicken underneath this. How it would was, you describe the goop in relation to or the it, sauce in relation to goop, like in terms of the gross viscosity? Oh, it's just, it was the same. It was it was the same. It was the dark brown variety, Ugh. dark brown goop. And the chicken was completely covered with this, and it's it's like uh, a slice. It's like a you know a big slice of chicken. It, I had to cut it mm-hmm. uh, once I found it because I'm looking around. I can't. I don't even see the chicken in this thing. And mm-hmm. then I'm like pushing the pushing the gravy aside. Oh, this is the chicken under here. And then here's the kicker: underneath all of this is rice. Somebody so made a oh goop. no, I, it's two kickers, <laughs> right? Two this kickers. Is, I, I forgot to mention there's sausage in here. It's chicken, sausage, peppers, onions, and potatoes, right? Like that. That's a good combination, right? Other than other than the peppers, yeah, okay, <laughs> and onions, okay. But but Italian sausage is part of the dish. Guess Yum-o. what they guess what they threw in in lieu of Italian sausage? Jimmy Bean see, breakfast sausage. And I saw I saw it on the menu, so it's like. I knew they had it in the kitchen. They threw kielbasa. Oh. They threw kielbasa oh, sir. instead of Italian sausage nope. into my chicken Murphy. Nope. 
And no, then a better a, a, a friend Ope would be miffed at how I'm rea we're reacting. <laughs> I like kielbasa. Uh, I don't kielbasa. want it in my chicken Murphy. I don't. Yeah. I don't have anything against kielbasa. I like it, in fact. I but I don't want it in chicken Murphy. And they tried to get it off. On, pull. They tried to pull a fast one on me. They thought mm. I was a food rube. No, they sir. thought I was a food rube. I'm not a food rube. Are we yelling now? I don't know. Jesus, bring me a girlfriend. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, you can put that in the highlights. <laughs> Jesus, bring me a woman. I'm not a food rube. Uh -huh. You don't put kielbasa in my chicken Murphy. What happened? You don't do it. You don't do it. What happened when you walked up there and just slowly turned the plate over on top of the guy's head? Well, here, here's the thing. You know, the, the bartender brings it out and she's like trying to, I don't know if they, they told her to say this. <laughs> She's like, wow, I'm jealous, you know. I'm like, well, all right. I, I, out, I mean, it looked like it looked substantial when it came out, you know. It it didn't look like any chicken Murphy I've ever had in my life. And I'm like, a little skeptical just looking at it. Then I'm digging in. The potatoes were fine, you know. The chicken, despite despite the goop, was okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was just. I mean, I, I later complained to, to them. I, I, you know, I did, I did lodge a complaint and the owner was there. Well, the owner's, the owner's lady friend. Um, and I, you know, particularly pointed out the kielbasa. I'm like, come on, you know, it's like, I, I know you had it on the menu. One of the other specials was, was kielbasa. So <laughs> you're, you're sort of, sort of using it in a couple dishes here. What did you have to get rid of it? Did you get stuck with a lot? I don't know. I mean, kielbasa is tough to slide in there and hide, like because it's so. Well, rich. that's it. I don't you like know, kielbasa. That, 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 that's where the insult was. You know, I'm yeah. like, really, Some idiot. You, you, you thought I was a food rube. Food and... rube. <laughs> Didn't like that food rube. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, don't pull that. Off. And she knows me. She, you know, she came. She said hello because usually I'm at the other restaurant. I see her over there too. And that's why she I, leaned in with that bullshit. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm well, that was the bartender. The, yeah, the the uh, the owner didn't say that, but um, so I, I I made my complaint known. I don't know if. And here's the thing: I <laughs> I didn't even have the heart to just ask him to throw it out. That would have made a more of a point. You know, I didn't want to look like a bad guy. You pull the so, fire alarm. So I got the container and I took it home, where throw I'll throw it out myself. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, it's sad. It's, you know, disappointing meal of the week. Uh, anything come to mind this week? Uh, not really. No. I've been having my salads uh, at, 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 you know, my three days at work, three days a week at work at least, I've been doing salads for lunch. And and it's fine. And it's cheap. You'll like how cheap they are. <laughs> like I get a whole, you know, salad like five bucks. Uh, but, you know, usually I get a little chicken but last week, I said, let me try the tuna. And I have to admit, the tuna has a little spice on it or something. Very good. But then today I went in, and I got what I thought was chicken on top of it. Guess what it was? Mm. Is that your guess? Tofu? Mm. Salmon. <laughs> wow, okay. You must have hit the roof. No, nah, uh, you know, I plowed through it. Like, it wasn't uh, uh, too fishy. Wasn't too crazy. I didn't get a ton of it, so I was just able to get through it. But uh, uh, no, I, I, I didn't. Other than that, I, I haven't had anything interesting the week. Although I did have a, uh, you know, I think I talked about it before. I've been craving frozen waffles. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we talked about it last time. Like, I think. Yeah, like not Belgian. So finally, last uh -huh. night I was like, I gotta. Have, so I went down to Wegmans. I got some frozen waffles. Uh -huh. But then I realized. Uh, the only butter I had was had been in the fridge. You know, I like to have my butter out, mm -hmm. so it's nice and soft. We've talked. Oh, about it. I'm glad you brought up this. I have, I have a question for you. Okay, but so I'm like, God damn. So it's like a brick. So I'm like, well, why don't I get a little bowl of popcorn? I'll eat it while I warm up the butter. Guess how I warmed up the butter? It's a stick of butter. It's in its wrapping. I tucked it under my armpit. No, oh, this is good. This this is like, yeah, this is, yeah, body temperature. This is body practical. temperature. 
right? 98.2 degrees at least. So I said, I said. With that uh, flannel, did you have a flannel on? Of course. Okay, probably, yeah. probably this one. <laughs> um, so I'm like, all right, I'll give myself until I, you know, I just had a little cereal bowl or the popcorn. Uh -huh. I said, I'll give myself until I finish this bowl of popcorn. And I'm not Mike Lisk. I'm a fast eater. <laughs> and yeah, I just tucked it up. Uh -huh. And then like every minute I rotated it. So each side got Why a little the well, oh, a little bit of the heat. Well, they're all getting heat if it's under your arm. Well, I like to be fair. I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> so, and uh -huh. there you go. After like I guess it was like five minutes, pulled it out. Perfect. Okay. No, I like this. Yeah, this uh, is uh... just on the outside on all four sides, yeah. like a sixteenth of an inch going around. It was perfectly soft. This is an artist at work. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Oh, this is an artist at work. So, I've never seen you this happy. <laughs> no, I like that. I, I think that is very, I, I could never have thought of that myself. It was practical. It worked beautifully. Boom. Thank you. Uh, warm room, 98.6 uh, armpit butter. Uh, I mean, it sounds gross, but it was wrapped. It Here's was wrapped. The thing. You, you could only, you, could, you couldn't pull that off with another person in the room. Well, I'm pulling it off with how yeah. many people are listening to this. <laughs> and this this may disqualify the prayer if, if this leaks out, if if Jesus catches wind. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, this is what Jesus is going to be disgusted. <laughs> he's, 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 well, he's got to enter that. You know, here's a guy who's warming up butter under his arm in his arm. I think he'd go, here's a guy who knows how to handle a situation okay. when All right. to deal well, with pressure. Let's maybe let's say the tw prayer three times a day instead of twice a day. Oh, that, yeah, this is what Jesus is going to be grossed out by when he sees me. When he reviews my life, he's going to be like, whoa, the no, butter. But but while we're on the subject of butter. Uh, I'm glad you're impressed, though. I'm very pleased. No, that was that that is that is going to make the highlight uh, description tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> I'm always fumbling around. What I've is, never, the, never heard what that is the Greg highlight? What is my highlight? I know. I always forget everything. And I just have to. <laughs> well, that's it. We forget the show as soon as we, we finish. Okay. But anyway, you bring up butter, and you brought up a bar of butter, which is my preferred way of having butter delivered. The other day, just purely out of convenience, I was in my local bagel place. Didn't feel like going next door to the Walmart to get the bars of butter I knew they had. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw they had whipped butter. The old whipped butter container. Mm -hmm. a any strong opinions one way or the other? Oh, it's fine. Like really, uh, okay. I mean, usually I would always get you know a little country crack tub of butter, but only in recent years. You know, because everybody's scared. Oh, you can't leave butter out in room temperature. You can't leave. And but I've been doing it, and it's perfectly fine. It's it yeah, nice and no. soft, just like when we were kids. Everybody mm -hmm. had one out on the table, mm -hmm. a butter dish cover. Right. No problem. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that they do it in Europe because that would make me look like an asshole, but mm -hmm. they do it in Europe. Well, uh, my experience with whipped butter is but I, that, but I'm not to be I'm uh, not above whipped butter. I've used okay, it. all right. Not my favorite. But but, but maybe I'll, country butter, country crock, I think is a little creamier, right? Would you say? Because I've got I and I, and this was the situation. I got this whipped butter, and it's crumbly, right? You ever get the crumbly whipped butter? When it's super cold and hard. Well. It, yeah, I, I had it in a refrigerator. You're saying leave it out; it won't be as bad. I don't know about that, but I mean, like a a real stick of butter. I I you can leave out, but I I don't know about like with butter or country. Yeah. Like I wouldn't leave a tub of country crack out. No, unless right. I was using it for other things. Maybe people can tell us in the in the in the comments. You missed but, that one. But here's why I don't like like the whipped butter. It's you know, just spreading it. It's it's crumbly. Yeah. It's like falling apart. It's not like know, the, the stick of butter. Yeah. And it's like, and then the taste even, it's, you got to layer it on really to get a good taste of it. So, uh, yeah, thumbs down for whipped butter. Uh, maybe maybe you like it. Maybe you can defend it in the comments. If you uh, what What am I missing here? Yeah, no, I've used it before, like, uh, 
but yeah, it's not my. I would never think to buy it. Like if it's a lot of times, yeah. if you have Bagel Tuesdays in the office, that's the kind of butter for some reason. Yeah, and yeah, if it's not soft, you kind of chip away at it, and <laughs> not great. It's falling apart. Yeah. So, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my boy Rick, who uh, had uh, was uh, very in very happy to hear have some buttered toast talk. <laughs> couple episodes ago, so. okay maybe you can start a, a buttered toast club but anybody B wants to try the armpit th btc is that something perverted what's that btc Butter, you want know, you can start a btc fans butter toast club <laughs> bbc lovers unite btc btc, BTC. lovers <laughs> anyway um i saw yeah, a story to repeat when you put the you have the stick of butter in your armpit, make sure you have the wrapper on it. Oh, of course. And yeah. a shirt. A shirt. How about saying. a paper towel? You know, I have for... to spell these things out. Well, I don't know. I paper towel, worried. you just wrap a paper towel around it. Well, I thought this about way my... the shirt doesn't get stained. Well, I thought about taking my shirt off because I mean I'm the only one who's gonna be eating the butter, so who cares? All right. And I feel like taking the shirt off would get is the quickest way to get that ninety eight point six to the butter. Mm-hmm. But it, with the shirt on, it still seemed fine. So, yeah. anybody who does it, let's hear in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see a lot of comments coming in on that one. Nah, it's gonna be great. I think you may you may be out there like a pioneer of this technology. <laughs> An artist. Man. An artist. Some people ask why, and I say, why not with butter? He's <laughs> he's Some an people. artist. I don't know. He puts butter under his arm. He don't look back. <laughs> Are we writing a song now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw this article, I thought of you. And I'm thinking, why couldn't Greg have thought of this one? Oh, thanks. So at first, <laughs> I thought I was touched that you thought of me. Uh -huh. And now I see it's just another backhanded insult. <laughs> and by backhanded insult, I mean insult. Well, what, let me present it, and you're going to say, yeah, I could have done that. Um, someone ordered a Uber Uber Bites. Is that what it's called? Uber Eats? Uber Eats. Who's a fucking Rube Eater now? <laughs> Uber I, Bites. I, I don't have stuff. I don't have food now? delivered to me. I'm still, I'm still, I still can get out and move Rube around. Rube. And, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not a, a food, food. What, well, what is a person who can't even get their food who's uh Ed? just a food loser <laughs> they have to have all their food delivered well, we got to cool come guy. up with we got to come up with what do you what are you saying it cool guy cool guy yeah let me tell you who's gonna like it in between our bouts of hysterical sex is cheryl crow okay <laughs> after the laughter died dies down after from let, the well, there you go that's her next album after the <laughs> After our be, funny, it's going to be about your uh, sessions. Yeah, with, after with our this, humorous love. Didn't you have an album called the Cheryl Crow Sessions? <laughs> Probably. This could be this Cheryl and Greg sessions. After the laughter dies down from our relations, we'll order some food. She'll be paying. <laughs> All right. Well, let me get back to my story. So, uh, someone ordered <laughs> Uber Eats from McDonald's. They deselected every ingredient of the double big Mac. So what what do you think McDonald's delivered? An empty bag? An empty box, yes. Good for them. Fuck them. <laughs> I'm on team McDonald's here. Yeah, yeah. Did, how much did they charge them? The full? Uh that's a good point. I yeah, I'd have to go back to see that. But uh I assume you assume they would, right? Yeah, I got I get. I'll have to confirm that. I'll. Uh, I take. I, I I'll take, follow up in the comments, but um, I take stuff off, and they never take. I'm the, just like, I, I saw this. I'm like, why didn't Greg think of this? You know, he could have made made the headlines. You know, man receives empty empty carton because he deselected because Listen, you 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 had a pretty uh you know the salad Big Mac salad <laughs> your Big Mac salad yeah uh, let me tell you something. Nobody uh -huh. thinks less of me than myself. And <laughs> I think I'm above that. That just seems okay. like puerile little look at me. A stunt? Yeah. You think it's a social media stunt? Well, obviously. Okay. I yeah. I also have to come out and say something. And you're going to get upset at me. Okay. I'm not a fan of the chef's reactions guy. 
Because yeah, you know what? I, I'm are just I'm, so ridiculous. It's like, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm sort of souring on him. Yeah, because he is. Yeah, the the things he he's he's reviewing are just yeah, they're so absurd. And, I mean, and people we, know it, so now they just make them more and more absurd. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Are they doing it just for him now? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> of course they are. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. No, nobody's making a meal. Oh, let me get. I know some up. of these people sound very sincere and. And and some people just have bizarre uh, food. Uh, I'm sure some of them are things that they do. But, but but for me to get excited about something like that, the food has to at least be somewhat realistic. You want to eat kind of thing. Like yeah, if I get oh, oh this guy's making mayonnaise out of a shoe and baseball <laughs> cards. Yeah. Like all right, well I'm talking. Yeah, know. no, I, I I get what you. Yeah, I'm sort of there. Yeah, you get into a rut with that, and I can't imagine the research that he's got to do. Uh, to comb through TikToks looking for all these horrible recipes, right? Every well, once in a while, well, every once in a while, he throws out something that he likes, you know? Yeah. But it's like one in 20, right? And, and it's I assume usually people send them this shit. It, but... It's usually some like lemon dish. He like he likes lemon stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, yeah, it's like, okay, I, I, you know, I know before he gets started, as soon as they're whipping it up, I'm like, oh, this is one he likes. So, this mm. is the one in twenty that you know he's not a he's not going to goof on. I assume um, people send him this shit. So, yeah, that's a good point. People Thank are probably you. sending it to him. If anybody has the inside track, would love to have him on the show to get to the bottom <laughs> of this. Oh, he's too big time now, doesn't he? Have like a million followers now or something? He's oh, big. Yeah, he's, he's big time now. Yeah, he's, you're right. Let's let, let's focus on getting me and Cheryl Crow together. We're and... small. We're small. Small fry. Let's focus on me and Cheryl Crow, and then uh -huh. worry about him. I don't know. I saw, I saw another article about a woman who drank orange juice for 40 days for Lent. That's it? She survived. Yeah, just orange juice. She lose weight? Um, she didn't look like she had a lot of weight to lose. Uh, they, they did talk about a young woman who was doing like an all fruit uh, diet who ended up dying in her 30s. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's encouraged. So uh, that's a disclaimer. Did it say why she did it? So anybody who starts drinking orange juice for 40 days and then blames it on us. Oh, sir. I'm just saying up front, don't do I it. I brought that shit up, not don't, me. Don't do, don't that's, do it. That's my list. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd she pick orange juice? That's I don't know. I mean, would, would you do anything like that with any juice or could you live off of juice? I, I mean, I have juice for, I did five days once. Five days? Mm -hmm. What kind of juice? Juice is a... It's uh, when I got a juicer, it was green juice. It was kale and... Oh, you, went, you were trying you about to that. Go, go healthy? And it, it was actually easier than I thought. Like, by the fourth or fifth day, I was perfectly fine. But then it just got sick because, you know, it's like half an hour of shoving kale into this thing over and over for, like, this tiny bit of juice. So I just got sick of it. So I said, fuck <laughs> it, I'll just be fat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I give you credit for the five days. I mean... And, and yeah, and to be honest, yeah. like I said, once once you hit a point, it was it was easier than I thought. Uh, not that I'm saying it's easy, but it wasn't. I I thought I'd crap out after like 30 minutes. You know, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, but I see a new business coming to my uh, local. It's actually down the line from Red Moon Pizzeria. Nothing a bunt cake. You get it? I, I've heard of them. Nothing but uh, cake. oh, it's a chain. I mean, I don't know if it's a chain, but I've just today I saw it pop up. Wow, what a coincidence! I I saw this is the first time I've seen it. It's it's coming to my strip strip mall near me. Yeah, well, it's a strip mall coming to Jer it's coming to J strip mall in Jersey, so maybe that's a hint. It's a chain. <laughs> well, you, think, you oh, never what know. Common pop operation is this. I mean, it took over. I was sad to see because uh, when I went up to get, pick up my dish, it was about four o'clock. I'm like, oh no. This is rush hour in this parking lot because there's not only a karate school, but there was also a dance school. And it, you know, the the parking lot turns into a a real clusterfuck. Oh my! Oh, these, oh! All these kids Easy. running with all these kids running around in their karate outfits and their tutus. I mean, it's quite a scene. But but then I I look back and I, I was like, oh okay. Uh well, sad to see, but the uh, dance studio is gone, and something called Nothing Bunt Cake is coming soon. And I'm like, well, all right, well, 
I guess I'll be reviewing that on a future show. <laughs> yes. No, I, I just thought of them today. Uh, it's a great name. I've never yeah. heard. Uh, you know what? If I can find it, you get it delivered. If you do a taste test, I'll try it too, if I can get one sent here. All right. I mean, I'm sure I'll forget about that the second we stop uh -huh. recording. But, you know. I'm going to get real serious like here now. It's it's We're winding down. I'm going to get real serious. Oh, shit. I hope you don't mind. Me praying to Jesus for a woman. Well, that was, yeah, that was earlier. No, uh, well, I already told you about this. This was uh, back in uh, January. Um, my cousin John, who was the son of uh, my uncle John, who uh, ran Masses Tavern in Bayonne. Uh, my, my uncle had passed away in 2019. Uh, but then I learned in January that his son, John, uh, who took over the bar with his wife, Erin, afterwards, uh, he had committed suicide. He was oh. a veteran. He was uh, struggling with PTSD for many years. I mean, mm -hmm. he he was just not the same after. He was part of the uh, 2003 uh, invasion force in Iraq, mm -hmm. a war that we should not have been in. Mm -hmm. But that's another matter. Um Oh. So, yeah, uh, he, you know, he was going, he was, he, his family was supportive. Uh, he was well, he was loved, he, you know, he, he was loved by his family and uh, his friends, but the struggle was too much for him. Um, and so he, I didn't even know about that uh, until the following one, month when his mother, my aunt Kathleen, she passed away. So, oh. yeah, so uh my yeah they lost the, my aunt and my uh, cousin within two months uh the oh. surviving members of the family my my two cousins jill and colleen uh, are still dealing with that um so that's been very tough so but here's i'm gonna try you know i've avoided talking about this because it was too heavy too sad um but something positive did come out uh, friday my my cousin John was doing artwork. He was he was painting. That was I think that was part of, you know, some therapy he was trying to help himself. Mm -hmm. He was always trying to help himself. Um, but uh, he was painting and, and, you know, I knew he was doing that. I didn't realize how many paintings he had, but he had a fair, fair amount of paintings. And they did a benefit uh, where they did an art auction of these paintings. At uh, it was uh at the uh it was a benefit for the Mount Zion Veteran Housing Mission at the uh, Lacey United Methodist Church, and it was partnered with Vet Work. And I'm like, okay, well, here's a horrible thing that happened, but we're going to do something positive, help other veterans who are struggling. So. Right. You know, I got to the place, I got stuck in some traffic, but I got there a little late and the place was packed. You know, I was like, wow, this is fantastic. You know, I didn't know what the turnout was going to be. It was like twenty five dollars to get in. But then you could use that towards a painting if you bought a painting. And this was the first art auction I'd never been to. I never, never did it. And I did learn a valuable lesson. Uh, I wanted to get, you know, a couple paintings if I could, you know, so I so I put my name, you know, there's like uh, the paintings are there and, and there's a little uh, list. You put your name down, how much you want to mm -hmm. purchase the painting for. And so I went around, there were about 75 paintings, over 75 paintings. Mm. And I put my name down about five or six. And um, they start, you know, but I went too early. Here's the thing hold off with the with put put you know I, I put my name down too early and people were outbidding me. Fortunately I did get a painting. Um so I'm glad I you know I was able to get a painting. But all the other paintings went. They all went. I uh, I didn't hear a final tally of how much money they raised, but I think they made quite a quite a bit of uh, you know of money for the this this veteran group. So yeah. people spoke. Um they had some good speakers. They had a, one veteran was talking about how 22 veterans commit suicide every day. 
which is just, I mean, I think the number of veterans who committed suicide may be more now than the number of soldiers who died in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm not, it's, it's a That's very fun. high number. And unfortunately, my cousin is now part of that statistic, sad statistic. So at least there was this, a, a positive thing that came out of it. And um, I don't know if you want to uh, make a donation mm -hmm. uh, to a local vet, you know, they're, they're struggling, you know, so uh, it's, it's, it's a good cause. And uh, I encourage you, you to do that if you can do it. Absolutely. Yeah. This, yeah. I, yeah. That's a great cause. I'm really sorry about all that. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it was stuff, tough. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, want to make have to make lemonade, but yeah, mm -hmm. to your point, if anything good can come out of this, uh, let's try to have somehow for these veterans. It's am it's amazing. I don't want to get into it, but it's amazing. Yeah. This thing problem keeps going on and gets worse seemingly. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, if we can uh, do something, that seems it seems like the least we can I can do anyway. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, this show is light. We try to keep it light, but then life intervenes and. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's not easy for a lot of people and if you can do something you know help a cause like that uh it's well worth it and um can we list the you know like that yeah the i again it was it was you know i don't know if, i didn't look ahead of uh this but uh it was the mount zion veteran housing mission mm -hmm. and this is uh they've they've converted a rectory into housing for veterans in lacy township uh, in coordination with uh, the Lacey United Methodist Church. Now, yeah, we, we've sort of, I guess we've we've kind of, <clears throat> maybe in the, just in the show, but, you know, we, we sort of goof on religion sometimes. But but here's the thing. For a lot of people, it's it's a form of community. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I don't think the majority of these people even knew my cousin. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the more, majority of these people just came together through this church they know this is a good cause, mm -hmm. and they all came out. It was it was touching. Yeah, um, yeah. To me, I, I, I mean, I to your point, I I shit on religion, but to me, that's the best thing about religion. Mm -hmm. Times like this, yeah. or even not times like this, come together as a community, help each other out. To me, that's the best thing that can even be suggested by religion. So. Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I at least have this this one painting from John and. Uh, I'm thinking of him. I've been think thinking of him ever since I got the news. It's just uh, uh, he was not the same. He, you know, I, you know, I grew up. He, he, he lived down in Lacey Township. That's where he grew up, Forked River. Mm -hmm. And we would visit often. And uh, so we were, we were close as cousins. You know, some cousins are dispersed around the country. You don't see them very often. But, and then when he took over Mass's Tavern, you know, his heart was not in it. You know, that was clear. Uh, he, he wasn't even drinking at the time. He didn't drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he was doing it, you know, mainly in memory of his father. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kept he kept it going as long as he could. I mean, the covid knocked it out and that was the end of it. But um, I tried to talk with him. We, he, you know, he was a real interesting guy, very funny at times and very uh you know he's a big reader we talk about different books and authors and that type of stuff just a a real great guy and just an, a a sad end to his life that he he couldn't get past it you know i mean as 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 yeah. hard as he he was in and out of uh psychiatric units he had he had lots of uh i didn't know this and my his cousin my his sister told me that he had lots of even uh the shock therapy and that wasn't working the drugs weren't working nothing worked and um mm -hmm. it, it, you know that was it uh he saw no way to get past the the daily suffering and that was the only way he, he could see which is unfortunate you know yeah but That's um huh? anyway hate to end on a dour note but like i said that's life it, it, things present themselves to you that you can't uh, just uh, avoid. Yeah, that's life, and let's try to get squeeze out any amount of goodness from it. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Hit the uh, like button, the subscribe button, and we'll see you next week.
Yep. Thanks to everybody listening. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks to everybody for listening. And we'll talk to you next week.